Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Fiji Masterclass, uh, which is one of the many sessions that have taken place on our Facebook page this week for the T2G Digital Destinations Festival in association with WTM. This is also the first in a series of three Fiji Facebook Lives. Uh, we're calling them Fiji Fridays, so there'll be one today, and then the other, next two will be taking place, one next week and one the Friday after, all at 3 p.m. So make sure you tune into those as well. I'm Maddie Barber, the Special Projects Editor at TTG, and I'm joined today by Jane West, who is Regional Manager for the UK and Europe at Tourism Fiji. Bula Maddie, Bula everybody. Good morning, afternoon even. <laughs> and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, the essential information that travel agents need in order to sell a holiday to Fiji. Um, this could be from making the journey um, to how long to spend in destination. And we're also going to be looking at some selling tips uh, for Fiji, including destination highlights, how to overcome some of the challenges of selling Fiji and what kind of budget you should be working to for your clients who are looking to travel there. Um, Jane is also going to be telling us a little bit about Tourism Fiji's new See You Soon campaign, um, which has launched since the coronavirus crisis. If you have any questions throughout the session, feel free to type them into the comment section and we will do our best to answer them live. So Jane, my first question really for you is, Fiji is known as that magical faraway place on the other side of the globe, um, but where exactly is it? Well, it's exactly halfway around the world, you know, couldn't be, you know, more remote, but it's not as hard to get to as people imagine. It connects very well with other destinations. So it's on the 180th meridian and uh, one of the first countries in the world to welcome each new day. And it's about three hours north of Auckland, four to five hours from Australia about 10 hours from the west coast of the States and eight to 10 hours from the Far East. Okay, wow. And that's very remote. So how would a UK traveller get there and just how long does it take to make the journey? Well, I'm not going to lie, it's quite a long way, but it's worth it. We say it's just one one night away and our national carrier Fiji Airways uh, has very good connections normally and they would operate through Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, other Pacific islands and also more frequent services and daily from Australia and New Zealand as well. Uh, so normally it would take about 21 hours, but for most people, they will be stopping off in either Australia or New Zealand and traveling through Fiji on the way home because of its proximity. Uh, or they could just be coming to Fiji, particularly honeymooners and divers and people wanting a longer stay in Fiji. Um, and also as an add on from, you know, places like the Far East and, and America, you know, and Fiji's the end destination. Okay, great. And what, what time of year should, should, should clients be looking to travel there at, in terms of climate? I mean, when's the best weather going to be? Well, we welcome everybody year round. It is warm year round. The temperature averages from about 22 to 29 degrees. So the water is always warm as well. The drier and cooler time of the year is between March and October. And that's a very comfortable time to come. And particularly if you're on a honeymoon, it's a great time to travel. Uh, we do get more humidity between November and April, but it's also a great time for the flowers and the vegetation and the fruits and, and also quite a good time for water sports as well. So you can still have a really good holiday year round. Okay, great. Thanks. And just how long would you recommend a visitor spends in Fiji? I mean, is the recommended time a week, two weeks? Well, for many people coming on um, from Australia and New Zealand in particular, they might only spend a few nights. And some of that's because they don't know how much there is to do in Fiji or they've already had a long trip and they just want a little taste of Fiji on the way home. Um, the, the shortest amount of time I've ever been is three days. That really is too short. But um, for most people from the UK, uh, the average time there now is about 11 nights. And, and typically people People would do a two centre so they might spend a few nights um, or you know a few days in in VT Levu the main island where they can experience a great degree of culture they can do self-drive explore the towns and also do some um, experiences but uh, they might also if they're traveling that far want to go and see some of our famous South Pacific Fijian islands you know with beautiful white sand so it makes a really good two center and then if they're divers they might want to take in the reef and different activities um, and of course uh, there's also rafting there too. 
Okay, great. And what about clients that might want to twin centre it with a destination outside of Fiji? And which destinations are best to pair it with? Well, Australia and New Zealand come to mind immediately because of the proximity once again. And, you know, I think it just does offer a perfect beach opportunity. But so many people don't just want to sit on the beach. They want to know that they have a choice when they get there and that there are lots of things to do. So it's not not just water sports. You know, Fiji is very well known for great water sports and surfing and kite surfing and snorkeling and um you know everything you might expect and sailing but there's so much to do on the land like hiking and bird watching and I mentioned rivers too. Okay great and my next question is um, what are the destination highlights of Fiji and I know you mentioned some there but what are the activities and attractions that agents should really make sure are on their clients itinerary? Well you know Singatoka River Safari is a great exciting jet boat that goes up some of the you know Singatoka River to visit a village Um, you get some adventure on the way you can do rivers Fiji rafting um, uh, down another river exploring the coral coast Uh, there are many things to do one of them is eco tracks a new activity which uses a velo bike through rainforest and uh, mangrove and and then you do a picnic on the beach but there's also the singatoka sand dunes where our fiji sevens train so so those are some quite um, easy activities to do almost as a half day excursion but you might also want to go out to an island for the day and um, certainly mala mala and um in cloud nine are typical excursions that you might be able to do um, or you go out on captain cook sea spray and um, other vessels out to the island where tom hanks castaway was filmed so those are those are quite fun things to do um, if you're a diver you might want to explore one of our um, two great reefs there the astrolabe reef and the grey sea reef but also the the soft coral capital of the world you know which takes in the northern islands of Fiji um, you might want to visit the international date line you might want to visit some rainforests we we have many iguanas and we have beautiful bird life in Fiji and extremely good marine life um, but also you can do cruising and sailing as well okay great thank you and, and what about the local people I mean what are they like what are, what are the key elements of their culture Well, above all, Fiji's most known for its people. We talk about the Bulla spirit of Fiji and Fijians. They are incredibly genuine, um, authentic and welcoming. Um, They're known for their hospitality. Um, They're incredibly um, optimistic and confident and and generally want to share. And they, they do treat you as a visitor in their own home. Um, we've got a little video to show actually um, which we'd like to share Maddie which is from Tokariki Island because we think that this best expresses the nature of the people yeah great I'll just pop that one for you hello it's something for us to welcome you as part of our family as part of the Fiji people Serving people, we do it from our heart. And we do really love them and count them as a part of the family. It's something general. You'll feel it. And we share that with our guests. Being in Tokorik is just like one big family. We make our guests feel at home, not in a resort. It's the connection that we have. We want them to feel special. It's all about the heart here. Yeah. Tokorik is an island. It is about the heart. And oh, it's a lovely video, Jane. Really, really encompasses the Fijian spirit, I think. Oh, it does. Um, we have many more on our social channels. Yeah. Okay, great. So I'm going to move on now to um, some of the common challenges that are associated with booking holidays to Fiji. Um, what are some of the common challenges that agents might come up against and and how should they overcome them? Well, I think, you know, first and foremost, first and foremost, it really is the concept of distance and the complexity of or perceived complexity of the journey. So I think once agents can familiarise themselves with the Fiji Airways network and how many cities you can pass through and how many different airlines, you know, Fiji Airways co-chairs with British Airways. It co-chairs also with Qantas. um, It co-chairs with Air New Zealand, Cathay Pacific, Singapore Airlines 
Airlines and now also uh, Finnair and American Airlines. So there's so many different ways and fare constructions um, to get to Fiji that it's so much easier than it used to be and also much more affordable than people imagined. Um, and also imagining that it's so far away that, you know, it's something that you can best save for a time when you might be retired or have so much more time on your hands. And um, uh, right now we have a lot of time on our hands, but we can't get there. Uh, but, you know, ordinarily, you know, it is a, a holiday that you can get to within a day and, and the experience is very enrich, enriching and, um, you know, we think transformational, you know, it's a very sustainable destination and, you know, we do feel that people are changed when they, when they visit Fiji in return. Okay, great. And you, you mentioned there that um, poor connectivity is, is a myth um, that yes. agents might often come up against. Uh, but are there any other myths about travel to Fiji that you can bust for us today? Um, well, it's not as expensive as people imagine. And, you know, it, it's a very affordable place to move around. First of all, the infrastructure is very strong. We have good roads, you know, we export the water. So it's pretty safe. Um, everyone can communicate in English. And, you know, it's very easy to move between islands. And that's quite rare in some destinations to have so many islands, but still be able to travel between them both affordably and and with relative ease. Uh, but also the choice of accommodation and cruising there is good. You know, you can stay very, very cheaply, you know, in basic accommodation from backpacking. Um, you know, we've got great bullet passes with awesome adventures and the Asawa flyer up into the Asawa Islands for backpackers and people wanting, you know, very authentic, but, you know, low key holidays that might be, uh, you know, staying in family run resorts, um, but still swimming with manta rays in the afternoon. Um, but then you can also stay in three star four star five star brands and um you know some of them are offering world-class spa treatments now so if you know six senses for example has got you know is a really easy resort to get to in the mamanutha islands and you know does wonderful spa treatments and um you know so so it you know i, I think the choice is there and the affordability okay thanks I have a question come in from Jane Middleton asking, um, what's your Facebook page? How can she look you up on Facebook? Um, well, everything can connect from, F our, our website is Fiji.travel. So there are links from Fiji.travel, which is probably the simplest instruction. And also you can learn a lot more on how to tailor the resorts and how to travel around and more information about different places in Fiji on our online training platform, which is uh, uh, Matai, M-A-T-A-I, which means expert in Fijian dot travel sorry dot fiji dot travel okay thanks and so now kind of moving on to um first timers for agents that have you know clients that haven't, haven't been to fiji before um, do you have any tips for agents that are selling to those type of clients Yes, I think I think the main thing is, you know, do consider a two centre, even if it's a short stay and perhaps contemplate, you know, staying around the Nandi um, area uh, on arrival and then combining it with a nearby island or with the Coral Coast. Um, you know, for people returning to Fiji or doing, you know, longer holidays, then by all means do two or three different islands. Um, Fiji Airways domestic carrier Fiji link will link to, you know, within 45 to 50 minutes to some of our other um, larger islands you know and from which you can travel on to and also you can do things like hiking which you know you don't need to fly or catch a boat to go on anywhere special in Fiji you know even VT level on its own has terrific adventure and, and some good beaches and very special experiences um, so I think it, you know you need to determine the budget length of stay um, what does the client actually want to do when they get to Fiji how adventurous are they and from there determine which resorts are best to stay in you know affordability wise and also some take families you know some some are more suited to honeymooners for example okay thanks and um, what, what about second timers um what golden nuggets of information might convince that client to yeah. dotted line and, and you know decide on returning to Fiji in case of what, time? 
definitely explore some of our other islands like Taviuni, Vanua Levu in the north, also Kandavu, Bengar Island in the south, you know, is where the fire walking comes from. Kandavu is on the Astrolabe Reef and is famous for its parrots. Uh, and also, you know, you could do a long cruise. Captain Cook does a really fantastic cruise through the Lao group, um, which is on the eastern border of Fiji, which is really pristine. And this trip only goes maybe three times a year. So it's quite a rare experience to go somewhere that remote. Um, but also Blue Lagoon does great itineraries as well um, up in the Asawa Islands. So, you know, going on a cruise can get, will enable you to see different islands for one price and, and experience a great deal of culture at the same time. Okay. And, and you mentioned that um, one of the myths is that Fiji is very expensive and it's not, not as expensive as you think it is. Um, but what about budget? I mean, is Fiji a destination for luxury travellers or, or does it have accommodation to suit those that are on a smaller budget? You can get there really cheaply. So if you're a backpacker, you can fly very um, cheaply from Australia or New Zealand um, into Fiji or even from Singapore if you're coming down from Far East or Hong Kong. And, um, you know, you can get a Buller Pass, you know, for less than £150, um, which will enable you to travel to different islands. Um, and then, you know, the per night cost might be as little as, you know, 10 to £20, £30 a night. Um, once you move into the four star resorts, you know, it, it's not so much the expense but what's included so you know meal packages are very affordable you might get extra nights you might get transfers included um, so look out for the added value which you know Fiji is really well known for but yes uh, we do have some incredible luxury in Fiji you know uh, where you can arrive by private aeroplane and have the island to yourself so it's it does have all of that too Great, thanks. We've had a question in from Linda Reynolds. Um, she's asking, is Fiji coronavirus free? Um, what's the situation there at the moment? Well, sadly, we're not untouched by it, but I'm very proud of the fact that our Ministry of Health has done a really good um, job in containing the virus. And so we currently, as of this morning, have three live cases. Um, God willing, you know, by next week or the week after, we should um, be free of uh, live cases. And and, you know, that that's a really great position to be in. Um, but, you know, because Fiji has so much space, I think, you know, we can really env envisage, um, particularly with all the time that, you know, resorts have on their hands at the moment, preparing for visitation, that, you know, some of the hygiene measures and concerns that people will have about, you know, being able to stay in a hotel, having some privacy, being able to travel safely, uh, you know, they, they can be reassured that those will all, all be in place. Um, but very, you know, we do we do have good medical facilities in connection with COVID and the contingency plans that they have. So the Pacific area generally has has luckily, um, you know, contained it. We have some domestic flying already started. Um, you know, we know that New Zealand is already opening up. So, yeah, that we're very optimistic and quite bullish about you know Fiji's position in the future. Okay, thanks. And I know since the coronavirus crisis, um, Tourism Fiji has launched a new campaign named Sota Tale. Yes. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that and, and what it entails? Yeah, so it's it's really more of um, an expression and feeling in Fiji. So it's a word that's used to uh, bid people farewell, but also at the same time in Fijian, um, you know, culture, it's important that, you know, we, we welcome people back. And once you've been to Fiji, we consider that you're returning home. You know, people in Fiji, you know, really do treat you like a guest in their own home and they really feel it when you go. And often, you know, people will sing to you as you arrive um, um, they serenade you on the beaches on arrival, but they also will bid you farewell in, in a similar way. Um, and, you know, Sotatale is a gentle, a gentle expression, um, but, you know, we're optimistic. You know, the Buller spirit is still there and, you know, we're, we're getting ready for everyone to return. Right, and, and I think uh, Fiji Airways has, has a video to show for about this. That's right. So um, Fiji Airways has produced a little video to express that feeling and, you know, to try and keep Fiji in our hearts and minds. Okay, great. I'll pop that on for you now then. Well, we can't welcome you to our home right now. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder. We'll get through this together. 
and together we'll soar the skies again. When the time is right, we will be here to welcome you back to our home. From our Fijian family to yours, Sopapale. It's not goodbye, just see you later. Great. And, and if travel agents want to get involved um, with this message of Sotatale, how, how can they do so? Yeah, just please share all our social messaging. Um, you can sign up to our Tourism Fiji newsletter and I can provide details of that, you know, for anybody that's taken part and, um, you know, we, we can email those out to you. Um, but yeah, we, we do have regular mailings and, and can update you on all those stories. And is there anything else agents should know about Fiji right now? Well, you know, we like to say it's safe. Uh, we like to say it's welcoming. And I think, you know, as people want to experience something so much more genuine and, and largely untouched, you know, in, in our new world of traveling, then, you know, I can't think of a better place to go and, you know, maybe spend time, you know, with your loved ones or your family. Um, it's a very, very, very special and unique place. Okay. We've actually just had a question come in from Will Cardale. Uh, he says, can you fly direct from London to Fiji or, or is there a stopover? Um, not yet. Um, we haven't got a supersonic jet to do it in one hit. No, you do have to stop over. So from London, you would go via, you know, Singapore, Japan, um, Hong Kong, or you can go through uh, the States, you know, Los Angeles and San Francisco. And he's also asked what the local food and drink is like and what influence has it, has it had? Well, Fijians love their food. Um, it's all about sharing and community. You know, we, we talk about all the stuff that's going on at the moment and the farm to table movement. So all the resorts, you know, offer fantastic food. But even, you know, locally, food is very affordable. So there are a couple of uh, well-known dishes. Kokonda is a well-known Fijian dish, which is where fish is marinated in, um, in coconut milk or lime. Um, it's a bit like a ceviche. We also have the Lovo Feast, where food is buried under hot rocks underground and cooked for three or four hours having been marinated so that's the Lovo feast um, but also it's multicultural so you know that there's so much fresh produce it's a very fertile country so fresh fruits and fish um, you know very popular great thanks and we had another question from Eleanor she says is it safe enough to travel solo in Fiji Absolutely. Um, sadly, I have to go there on my own all the time, but I always have friends when I get there. No, you're, you know, pe people traveling on their own, it is considered a safe destination. And, um, you know, I've done so many times myself. Great, thanks. And Lisa's asked, uh, can, we, can we be sent the video to use on our social media? Absolutely. We're happy to share everything. So um, maybe you can leave your details and we'll get that off to you even today. Thank you. Well, I think that's all we've got time for today. Um, but we will be back next week for the second instalment of Fiji Fridays, when we'll be hearing about how to get around Fiji um, and the differences between the destinations islands, uh, which should help you curate an itinerary, um, which is going to really wow your clients and really get them uh, to want to go there. Yeah. Um, so this is the last session of TTG's Digital Destinations Festival in association with WTM. So I really hope you found this week's content informative and, and that it will help you sell holidays once people start to travel again, which will hopefully not be too far in the future. In case you missed some of our fest festival sessions this week, you can catch up with all previous content at tgmedia.com forward slash DestFest. Um, the content includes a virtual seminar covering when, where and how the UK travel market will recover from the coronavirus crisis. Uh, a virtual yoga class filmed across four Queensland locations and a number of masterclasses that you can use for destination training. So yeah, make sure you log on and have a browse. And um, thank you very much, Jane, for joining us today and for helping me with this masterclass. And thank you to everyone that's been watching. We'll see you thank soon. you. See you soon. Sotatale. Sotatale. <laughs>